Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone to play the games you have. It's great to grow your collection, but remember to play the games already in your collection. I'm doing these streams because I have this extensive collection that I really haven't touched in almost 15 years. Try not to collect games simply for the sake of collecting. They were made to be played, so I think that you should. I have played through all 45 unique games which I own that were published by Activision for the Atari 2600. So I'd like to give you my list of 15 cartridges that I think everyone should have in their collection. These games are not the rarest games, nor are they always the most expensive, but they are fun to play and I enjoyed playing them for my stream. As a child I used to say, you couldn't go wrong with an Activision game, and I still believe that today. There is an exception, however, with the game Ghostbusters 2, but I don't really believe that's truly an Activision game. I believe it was incomplete, and it was released by Selu uh, to recover some of their development costs for the game. Also, I just want to add that this is my own personal preference based on my own personal gameplay. There's no outside influence on any of these games. I'm listing these cartridges here in the in the the number order that they appear on BGR's giant list of Atari 2600 games. So before I begin, I just want to say that if you enjoy retro gaming, or as I call this, legacy gaming, and videos like this, please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm very active on all three platforms under the name AtariMan71. So the first game on my list is Cartridge AG-010, it's Kaboom, and I covered that in episode 46. So Kaboom is basically a paddle game where you control three buckets at the bottom of the screen and you are trying to collect bombs that the mad bomber is dropping from on top of a wall on top of the screen. As you miss a bomb, all the bombs on the screen burst, you lose a bucket, and then you go back a level and the, the, the villain gets a little grin on his face. Um, but every level increases the number of bombs you must catch and increases the speed and how random the bomber drops the bombs and it gets very hectic. And every time, you, if you lose your three buckets, the game is over. Now I've gotten past the third stage, I think once or twice, it's pretty difficult. And I can't imagine how crazy those higher levels are. But I think if you get dialed in and really focused, I think you probably could do well in this game. And it's pretty fun and it's pretty addictive. The second game on my list is Cartridge AX-013. It's Barnstorming. And I covered it in episode 47. And if you're not familiar with Barnstorming and the, the term Barnstorming, after World War I, People were buying these surplus military planes and using them to do basically air shows, local air shows across the country. And one of the tricks that they would do was to fly through barns, as crazy as that sounds. There are some old black and white films of people doing this, but uh, it's something that you don't see very often today. And the modern air shows, you know, they're high flying jets and aerial tricks that, you know, these barnstormers wouldn't even have dreamt doing in these old planes. but. You know, it's basically the beginning of an air show. So in the game, you're flying through barns and over windmills, trying to avoid birds, and it's a timed game. And if you've ever tried to get any of the patches that Activision, they don't give them out anymore, but the act, you know, in many of the Activision achievements, and you've tried to do the barnstorming one, it's actually very difficult to do. You almost have to fly a perfect game to achieve it. So the third game on my list is Cartridge AX-016. It is Star Master, and I covered it in episode 48. And Star Master is similar to Star Raiders that Atari put out. It's a pretty fun game, and um, you basically maneuver through space, attacking enemies, trying to def you try to defend your bases, and you know, in the process you get damaged and you have to go to the bases. You have to refuel from time to time. You have to control your fuel. You have to um, 
uh, take out all the enemies before they take out all your star bases. And it's pretty fun. I've only ever played it on the lowest level. But you can play it for a long time, and it doesn't get boring. And sometimes it gets very challenging. Sometimes the last enemy in the game, you know, is, suddenly becomes supernatural. They're shooting at you like their life depends on it. And, and it gets very difficult and very frustrating sometimes, but it's also very fun. So the fourth game on my list is a favorite by most people, and I'd be surprised if you hadn't played it if you're watching this video. The cartridge is AX-018, and the game is Pitfall, and I covered that in episode 48, as well as an extra where I achieved the, the Pitfall badge. So Pitfall, you're running through the jungle as Pitfall Harry. You have to jump over crocodiles, jump over scorpions, jump over fires, snakes. You know, there's tunnels you need to go through, and the tunnels accelerate your speed to go through the game. It's timed. You have three lives and 20 minutes to capture as many treasures as you can. And I think there's 30 treasures in the game. And I've never completed the game, but I've seen people that have. I struggle with the scorpions in the in the caves and, or in the underground section. So I really avoid the underground area as much as possible. And that's probably what works against me. But Pitfall is very fun. It's very exciting. It's very challenging. When you need to jump over the alligators or crocodiles or whatever they are and jump on their heads, there's really a very small window where you can step on them where you don't fall in their mouth. So it's kind of challenging. And uh, I run the game backwards, even though David Crane said he was surprised that people were running it that way. But basically, I started doing that as a kid because if you fell in the crocodile pit or the mouth or anything, you just skip that, skip that challenge altogether. The fifth cartridge on my list is cartridge AX-020, and it is fan favorite River Raid, and I covered that in episode 49. Not only is it a fan favorite, it's a favorite of mine. Um, I didn't, I played it as a kid, but I wasn't really ever, ever very good at it, but as I played it now as an adult, I've gotten better at it over time, and it's actually very challenging. You, you can't fly into the walls of the river and you need to avoid the enemies, shoot the enemies, refuel your jet, take out the checkpoints in the bridges, and it's uh, it's a challenging game. And then there's jets that come that you need to take out. It's, uh, it's a pretty fun game, and it's pretty challenging. And um, I, I know why it's a fan favorite. It, it can lead to hours of gaming, and, and even though I can't really get that far in the game, you know, I maybe get to four or five checkpoints, you know, it's it's actually fun just to even redo the, the lower levels and to learn something new, a new way to fly, a new path to take, or something like that, and get as many points as possible. So the sixth game on my list is Cartridge AX-021, the Spider Fighter, and I covered that in episode 50. And Spider Fighter isn't on the top of a lot of people's lists, but it was my one of my favorites as a kid, and it's still a game that I find pretty entertaining. When you get up to the bananas in the game, the, the action gets very hectic and then after you clear the bananas it resets back to the oranges and things slow way down and that's a difficult adjustment to make because every level gets more and more difficult and then it just resets back to the beginning. I know a lot of people probably would say Mega Mania is a lot better than this game and you know I may agree with them in time but right now you know, I didn't play it as a kid, and it's it's still pretty challenging for me. I haven't figured out the patterns yet. And so with Spider Fighter, you know, I can get all the way through the game, and, you know, it, it actually is pretty fun to me because it's a game I'm good at, I guess. And even though the action is somewhat repetitive, the speed changes is enough for me, and there's a randomness in how the enemies are deployed so that, you know, you don't know who's going to come where and... The low-down enemies always try to shoot you and have the easiest time because it's the shortest path. And It's a fun game to play. So the seventh game on my list is Cartridge AX-022, and it is Sequest, and I covered that in episode 50. And Sequest is one of those games that I've had for 20 years and really never played, and that's unfortunate because... I find it pretty fun to play, even though the gameplay is a little repetitive. I mean, you're rescuing your divers, and it's the same number of divers every time. It's random where they generate, and the enemies change and come at you at different rates and different speeds and at different um, patterns. 
and it and it is fun. I mean, it's a fun game. You know, I I really can't get it over. The, I think the fourth level of the game right now, but it's actually a very fun game to play, and I'd recommend playing it if you get a chance. So the eighth game on my list, we're basically halfway through now, is AX-026, and it's the game Enduro, and I covered it in episode 51. And Enduro is a racing game where it's an endurance race, where you start out and it's a 24-hour race and you have to pass 200 cars on the first day, 300 cars each additional day. And the 300 cars is difficult because if you hit any of them, it slows you way down, you have to touch the opposite side of the of the road that you're on and it just it makes it difficult to pass those cars recently I've learned as an adult you don't have to run full throttle to get it done if you run at a slower speed and not crash into anybody it's better than running at full throttle and having a couple crashes because um, my reaction time is not the same as it was when I was like a 12 or 13 year old kid and and now I just, I, I see things better, but I don't necessarily have the reaction speed. So I can, I can know, you know, when to get over to the left, when to get over to the right, know when to brake. That's another thing. I started to learn how to use my brakes in the game. You pull back to brake. But uh, it's a long game, and you can play it for a long time. And it, even though you're always just driving down the road, passing cars, they add in nighttime driving, they add in... Um, I think it's fog I think it's supposed to be fog in the game and then there's a countdown there's pressure like once it's you know pre-dawn of the next day and you're you're rushing to get all your cars passed it uh, it's it's really kind of hectic the only downfall of the game is if you qualify for a day before sunrise and you always do the additional cars that you pass don't count towards your next day's total so when sunrise comes up it loads up 300 more cars that you need to pass and you know even though you've already passed 50 cars getting to sunrise those cars don't count and they they add points on your total but you know nobody's playing for points at the end of five days I believe you get a trophy either gold silver or bronze and I uh, have never made it to the end of the five days um, I don't know that I would want to designate that much time to the game but maybe maybe one day I will Maybe one day I'll get one of those trophies. So the ninth game I have on my list is Cartridge AZ-028, and it is Robot Tank, and I covered that in episode 52. And so Robot Tank is basically, it takes place in the future, and you're driving what it says, a robot tank, and you have cameras in the tank that show your live feed from the tank and you're shooting at enemy robot tanks so nobody's getting hurt in these games it's <laughs> it's autonomous warfare at its worst um but it's it's pretty fun and pretty challenging you can get damage to your tank they can damage your turret they can damage your tracks they can damage your cannon they can damage your cameras and your radar and stuff and 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 then you can just get killed and when you get killed there's they they put static on the screen and they switch you to a reserve tank if you have one. And I've I've cleared, I think, the, I can't remember the most, it's like 18 tanks. Um, there's 12 in a, in a, I don't know, what do they call it? A, a, a group of tanks. It's 12, and then if you clear 12 tanks, you get a free, a free life, an additional life. And so, it, but it's a pretty fun game. It's better than Battlezone. The, the game co comes over better than Battlezone. Not the arcade version of Battlezone, but the regular version of Battlezone. The, I mean, the Atari 2600 version of Battlezone. So cartridge 10 on my list is AX-029, and it is the game Crackpots. And I also covered that in episode 52. And Crackpots is basically kaboom, but in reverse. You're at the top of the wall, and there's spiders crawling up the wall and they're going to try to crawl into the windows of the building at the top floor and you have flower pots you're armed with flower pots and you need to drop them on the spiders to kill the spiders i don't like spiders in general um so this is kind of a fun game for me you know i uh i've been bit enough by spiders and nothing ever super venomous but you know it's uh 
I hate spiders. I mean, they just give me the creeps. And yeah, they used to crawl across me in my parents' house when I was a kid. And I, I just, ugh, I loathe spiders. So I have the, I, I find this game pretty fun. And if you have so many misses, you can get so many spiders can get into the building in each wave. And the spiders form, uh, they, they climb up the building in different patterns. And it's kind of fun, and you need to predict where they are going to be sometimes and drop the right pot and squish them. And, you know, I found it's easiest to squish them if you get them on the ground. You know, once they start climbing up the building, especially the red ones, because they climb up at a diagonal. And so, you know, you can drop pot A and then go to pot B, and, and you drop all three, and none of them hits it because they're it's just ahead of them. And... You know, you th you think, oh, I'll skip ahead too, but it's just instinct is going to the next one and dropping it in the next one. And it just, it climbs up at a rate that you just can't get to it. But as you miss spiders, the building gets shorter and your reaction time needs to get quicker. It's pretty fun. The game gets pretty hectic in the higher levels. So also as the levels increase, the spider speed increases too. So the 11th game on my list is Cartridge AZ-030, and that is the game Decathlon. And this is also covered in episode 52, so episode 52 has three of my favorite games. And Decathlon is, or as I call it, the arm breaker, because at the end of the game, your arm feels like jello. Um, the reason being is there's, there's three running races, and well, there's four running races, and you need to use the joystick to to make your character run and you left and right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the faster you go, the better you do. And that's in every event, you know, in the shot put, you need to do that action and then push the button to throw the shot put or the same thing with the javelin or the high jump or the pole vault. You know, the 110 meter hurdles is difficult too, but it's not as difficult as track and field. And it's run, 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 jump, run, 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 jump, run, 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 jump. And it, um, it's a challenging game, but it's pretty fun. Um, if you get to the end of the game and your score is high enough, you can get a gold, silver, or bronze uh, Activision patch based on the score that you achieve. The 12th game on my list is Cartridge AZ-032, and it's Pressure Cooker, and I covered that in episode 53. Pressure Cooker is another game that I've had for 20 years and really never have played. Basically, you're a chef in a kitchen, and there's an automated grilling machine that makes burgers, and it drops the bottom bun and the burger, and you need to put the toppings on it and the top bun and deliver it to a vending machine where it's automatically wrapped. And it's a timed game, and there are, it's just not random burgers. There's, there's specific orders that you need to fill. And so it's, it gets a little hectic if you grab something that's the wrong ingredient. You have to put it on a burger. And then you, the best thing to do is complete that burger and drop it in one of the, the vending machines that um, doesn't want it, even though it just explodes. Because if you let it drop off the conveyor, you lose basically a life. And so then you go back. But the only reason, the only way to be able to pick up a burger is if it has a top bun on it. So you need to complete another burger somewhere on the conveyor belt to get the bun for the bad burger, it's just, it's kind of crazy. It's a crazy game. And I've gotten to the second level. Um, I've never cleared the second level because it's a timed game. And, you know, the first level is pretty easy because you have these menu items and you go through it, you make a couple mistakes, no big deal. The second level is timed and you don't have as much time. I mean, it's just, you, you can't make mistakes and you have to carry over time from the first level, I believe, to complete the second level. So it's a, it's a pretty challenging game to play, but it's pretty fun. The 13th cartridge on my game is cartridge AB-035-04 and it's Pitfall 2. I covered it in episode 54, the extra dated 325-2021 and the extra um, pitfall to achievement level. And you know, the, I, I achieved the pitfall Harry's, I don't remember what it's called, Explorers or which one that one is, but I achieved the, the patch level. So I covered that in three. And this game was one of my favorite games as a kid. And I really liked it because 
you didn't die and you could play the game until you achieved it and if you didn't achieve it you could go back and try again and you know you didn't have to get every gold bar you didn't have to do you only had to rescue three things to solve the game your niece your cat and recover a diamond ring and you know I was able to do those it made me figure out the timing so that at one point I ran through the whole course and I missed one gold bar and it wasn't the one in the top level it was somewhere in the in the underground labyrinth and I missed one gold bar and I was this close to having a perfect game and that's one of the things in my child like people always say well I didn't get Eagle Scout you know I didn't get the perfect game in Pitfall 2. I also didn't get Eagle Scout, but um, <laughs> Pitfall 2 is really the thing that I, you know, I really, I, I, I was tempted to go back. I'm on vacation right now, and I was tempted to go back and try to get a perfect score right now, but I think I'm going to do it more around the end of the year when, you know, I'm on break from work over the, the Christmas holiday, and there, um, you know, you, you're really not going outside that much in the winter time. Right now, you know, I want to be outdoors. The weather's pretty nice, and if it was rainy, I would probably try it. But it's been the weather's been good here, so I'm going to uh, get outdoors as much as I can. So the 14th game on my list is Cartridge AZ-036-04, and it is H-E-R-O or Hero, as a lot of people call it. I also covered that in episode 54. And Hero is a game I had for a long time, but I really couldn't play it because the version I had was PAL. I got it from a sale in Australia. And uh, it wasn't a game I was familiar with as a kid, and even when I bought it, I wasn't familiar with it. I thought it was just some weird Australian game. And now you, you go there and you can find the NTSC version, and people really realize how good a game it is. I was able to play it because I bought a converter box that I can play games on NTSC equipment and the colors are off a little bit but the, the game is playable very playable you know it's just weird colors and uh, I have to say the game is pretty fun and it was so fun I ended up going out and buying an NTSC version of the game so in the game you are rescuing trapped miners in a, in a mine and you have to work your way through the mine and find them and, and get to them. You just have to get to them. You don't have to get them out. And you get to them and then you move on to the next level. There's lava, there's spiders, there's uh, claws, there's lights that you can knock out, there's walls that you need to blow out. Or you can shoot them. You have, you're equipped with bombs or a laser thing that shoots out of your head. Um, but it's a pretty fun game. And the lava is really hard to tell because it's just glowing red... Um, walls there's there's no different pattern on them I, I think in some of the other games it was easier to tell what was lava lava and what was walls i mean here the walls are blocks the lava is blocks it's just by color you need to differentiate but hero is a pretty fun game and i'd recommend getting it if you have a chance if you don't have it already it's kind of expensive but it's it's pretty fun to play and it's available on multiple platforms too So the last game I have, the 15th game on my list, is Cartridge AZ-037-04, and it's the game Beam Rider. And I covered that in episode 55. And Beam Rider is a game, I had a cartridge that said Beam Rider, but unfortunately it was ColecoVision. I bought a ColecoVision and never played it for ColecoVision. I'm really not that fan of, big of a fan of ColecoVision controllers. But anyway, um... Beam Rider, you know, is a pretty fun game. You're you're basically on this grid in outer space, and you're in a spaceship, and you're taking out the enemy invaders, and then there's 15 per per sector, and then if you take out all 15 of them, then you have to take out the mother. You don't have to take out the mothership. You can take out a mothership in that sector. And I think there's 99 sectors total. There's asteroids you need to avoid. There's free lives that you can pick up but if you shoot the free life it becomes debris that shoots at you really fast and you need to get out of the way of it um, there's there's um, enemy shots that are coming at you and when the mother ship comes out there's these distractors that come that basically you can't destroy you can destroy them but it takes out you only have three missiles to take out the mother ship and if you use one of the missiles and it hits one of these distractors you don't destroy the mother ship 
first few times I played the game, I got lucky and I was able to destroy the mothership real easy. Lately, though, it's been a lot more difficult. And uh, But it's a very fun game. It's pretty addictive. And it looks great for an Atari 2600 game. I consider these games as must-have Activision cartridge for your Atari 2600 collection. And again, this is simply my personal preference for my gaming experience. You may feel differently, and if so, please leave a comment. I realize that there are a lot of good games with which Activision has released that aren't on this list, but I had to draw my line somewhere. And I feel like these are games you can pick up at any time and put them in and play them and have a good time. It doesn't require you to be the best gamer or the fastest responses. It's still a fun play. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know I'm not the best gamer out there, but I'm trying to bring you some information and some gameplay from my extensive collection. I'd like to remind everyone that even though we may be through the worst part of the pandemic, I want you to be healthy and stay safe. And I still think it's a good practice to wash your hands and social distance. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, watch me play these games. And I'd like to remind everyone that I also stream on Twitch Friday, Saturday, and Sunday under the name AtariMan71. I will also upload the videos to YouTube the following Monday through Friday. I'll film five videos Friday through Sunday, and then I'll upload them one each day of the week the following week. I will be streaming next Friday, or this Friday, <laughs> um, and I will have three new games, and probably in the evening sometime. Um, but if you want to know my exact schedule, look on Twitch. I have it, I have it up on Twitch. So thank you for watching and have a great day.